Hello and welcome to Sketch Together. My name is Pablo Stanley and this is Design Digest, where we share news about design, tools, apps, and other cool stuff. Let's start this episode with a truly excellent sketch plugin, a sketch material. A sketch material allows you to quickly generate complex material components in Sketch. You can create forms and specify the type of field you want to add, like text inputs, radio buttons, drop downs, check boxes, etc. You can also add icons by accessing the full library of material icons, searching for a specific one, change the color, and then just add it to your project. You can easily create tables by just copying and pasting your info from a spreadsheet and then generating the table. You can add typography styles, snack bars and toasts, dialogues, add chips, tooltips, buttons, and even elevations, which creates containers with different shadows. It's a fantastic plugin. If you want to incorporate material design into one of your projects, I recommend this plugin. Now I want to introduce you to an awesome new app that as a designer, you might want to always have in your menu bar. I'm talking about contrast. Contrast is a color contrast checker, so you can make sure your text colors aren't too light or that they don't clash with other colors and cause poor accessibility. I'm going to let Matt D. Smith, one of the creators of this app, tell us more about the project. Hello, and welcome to Sketch Together. I'm Pablo Stanley, and this is Design Digest. Pablo, thank you so much. I'm super excited about this new tool called Contrast that my friend Sam Sofas and I just released. And uh, just to kind of, I don't know, just to give kind of an origin story, Many years ago, like maybe five or six years ago, I was working on a project for Wells Fargo. This project had like standard that every color had to be a double A rated color as far as text, readable text is concerned. This is when I first really learned about color accessibility and I didn't know what double A meant. I didn't know anything about contrast ratio. So up until just recently, I was always going to the web and I would copy and paste my hex codes. It's great, but it's also like now I got to get online. I'm tempted to check Twitter while I'm while I've got my browser open and it's taking me out of my designs, sometimes maybe like pulling me out of my deep focus. And I always wanted like a little menu bar app. Uh, and so Sam Sophus was in town and we got to talking about apps. We just kind of really quickly decided to build it and put it together. And within the span of about a week or two, we had a working app, the design's done. And then we spent like another week or so fixing a lot of bugs in the app. The color picker is especially tricky. And then I was designing and coding the website, adding to the website, and then ultimately released it. And it turns out there are a lot of people that really love this tool. And I think that the people that already knew about color accessibility realize the value that this kind of tool has. And then what's really exciting is that all the people that haven't actually done much color accessibility work are now, it's this tool is more accessible to them and creating more accessible interfaces, something in their mind now. Like it's just fun to check those colors now. And it's surprising if you've never done it, just how many light gray colors will fail when it comes to checking color contrast. That's the app, it's called Contrast. You can go to usecontrast.com, click the App Store button, boom, and then it's right there. Pablo, thank you for letting me share. Back to you. It's time to talk about our illustrator of the week, Mercedes Bazan. Mercedes is a graphic designer from Buenos Aires, Argentina, who is currently working at Stripe. She combines striking colors and simple shapes to create some amazing looking visuals. She is in charge of the editorial work and internal communications at Stripe, and her work includes posters, pins, and beautiful graphics that she shares with the world. I had the pleasure to meet her recently and ask her some truly random questions. But first, let's put some music. Everything that has chocolate, but my favorite is chocolate with chocolate chips or chocolate sprinkles. Oh. I hate when people chew gum with their open mouth. Like, I hate it. I know how to make a little purse or wallet with paper. Really stupid, it's useless. 
my father. He is great. Oh, uh, yeah, because he always pushed me to do stuff that I like, and um, he always gave me his support. Okay, I'm reading this book that is called How to Have a Nice Day, and it really helped me because it gives me a lot of tools to go through the day and to get the best of the day. Uh, Caroline Webb. Now, if you're thinking about designing for VR or AR, you might want to start with an app that makes it easy to create 3D models. Google recently introduced Blocks, an app that helps you create 3D models in virtual reality. That means no more mind tricks to create real volumetric objects on a 2D surface. You put the VR headset and build the objects around you. I asked Gabriel Valdivia, VR designer at Facebook, if he could give us a brief review of the software. Blocks is a VR app that allows you to create 3D models in VR. This has been great for me because as a VR designer, I've been trying to get into tools like Maya, Blender, and other 3D modeling tools, which are really hard to understand from a 2D interface. There's often really complicated UI and really dense ways of using those apps. Well, Blocks makes that a lot easier and more natural. It's a lot simpler. It's maybe if Maya is Photoshop, Blocks is something closer to Sketch where uh, you can only do a few things. You play with only a few primitives, but from there you can create a lot of things. You can create uh, things that are then reusable, right? So you create uh, OBJ files, which are 3D models that you can then import into other apps like Unity to make them interactive, maybe tweak the shading or do th things like that. I have been doing a daily challenge where I try to uh, model uh, one object a day. Um, and that has helped me kind of like train my 3D muscle. I really enjoy Blocks. It's helped me in my process for uh, communicating ideas in VR, getting my feet a little more wet on the 3D world. And as a designer, I really appreciate how they leverage what makes VR so great, make a problem like 3D modeling much more accessible in VR. So that's Blocks. I recommend it. Give it a try. My name is Gabriel Valdivia. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. Now, the random font of the week is Flow. Flow is a new typeface built for wireframing. It's free and it comes in three weights, circular, rounded, and block. Dan Ross, a product designer at Shopify, designed this typeface. Flow is perfect for those moments when we need to present something more abstract, bigger picture, before working with real content, when you don't want other people or yourself to be distracted by the little details and you want to focus on iterating and trying a lot of different things. You can get the font and try it out for free right now. The portfolio of the week comes from Jack Morgan, whose work goes across design, advertising, and marketing. He uses his site to tell a story visually for each project. The work takes the front and center and leads the narrative. Jack presents the projects with the right balance between text and graphics. I recommend reading the story of how the Tiny Cards app from Duolingo turned into a reality. In his portfolio, the designer tells us about how the project evolved from something called Flips to Tiny Cards and talks about how he developed the tone and feeling of the app. Tiny Cards was named one of the 10 best iOS apps of 2016. Hopefully you get inspired on how to present your work on your portfolio. That's it for this week. If you have a suggestion on what I should cover next, please leave a comment with a link. Thank you so much. See you next time.